Hello, hello, good morning and good evening, everybody. My name is Eliana Lemos. I am the coordinator for international relations and students exchange at the Faculty of Medicine, RWTH Aachen University. And today we're here gathered together for our third keynote in Visemera. For those of you uh, who are not participating in Visemera, Visemera is a research program for health profession students uh, from all over the world. And uh, this program was uh, designed in collaboration with um, Peruvian University Cayetano Heredia in Lima and Centro Universitario Christus in Fortaleza, Brazil. This program is virtual and uh, with uh, component of blended mobility and was funded by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research in Germany and by the German Academic Exchange Service. And today, our third keynote um, is um, on public health research in Peru, held by Dr. Ernesto Gotzer from Peruvian University Cayetano Heredia. Um, so I have, we have the pleasure to have uh, Dr. Gosar with us uh, now. Hello, Dr. Gosar. Good morning, good evening, everyone. Now, um, I prepared um, a few uh, words about uh, Dr. Gosar so that um, uh, you know um, about our speaker today. Uh, Dr. Gosar is a medical doctor, a professor, a researcher and international consultant. He graduated in medicine from Peruvian University Cayetano Heredia. And Dr. Goster also studied public health in the University of Heidelberg in Germany and international health at the Pan American Health Organization. Dr. Goster is an experienced specialist in international and global health. And he has worked with people from different cultures in more than 20 countries in four continents. Um, during the last two decades. He is a member of the International Panel for the Global Health Security Index and advisor on the COVID-19 pandemic response. Dr. Gosser is currently an international consultant, researcher and associate professor at the Peruvian University Cayetano Heredia. Um, now for today, please feel free to um, ask your questions during the keynote um, and um, you can write them in, in the chat um, or you could uh, turn your microphone on um, and uh, ask your question. Otherwise, I can't ask all participants to um, uh, turn off the uh, microphones so that we can concentrate and uh, hear without disturbances uh, what Dr. Gotzar is going to tell us today on his keynote on public health research in Peru. So Dr. Gotzar, the floor is now yours. Oh, okay. Um, good morning and thank you to Aachen University for having, for having me today. And I will start by, by out, uh, telling the outline of this uh, presentation. This is, uh, of course, my personal view, and this is uh, the, the public health, health research in Peru at a glance. And I will cover these topics. I will not go through all of them in, in detail, but I would like to start with uh, a question. This is a keynote, but I want to be uh, to have a, um, a more live um, presentation. So I will start by asking you, what is public health for you? So for to answer that, please go to Mentimeter. I will show you the Mentimeter question here. You need to go to menti.com and use this code. Three seven three nine, one two three three. Please go ahead and um, um, place your answer. There are some options there, and, and we will explain that later. That the Mentimeter is is already open. You can start responding.
Mm -hmm. We have four questions, four answers. Good. Okay. Someone else? Okay, health care provided by the government. It's running first. Okay. Well, we we will stop here. Okay. We will stop here. We have most of the people have said that is health care services provided by the government. And the second place is for public health is a specialty of medicine. Well, we will we'll go back to our presentation and we'll try to, to explain our point of view of what is public health. I don't know if you have seen these characters, these uh, personalities, um, but uh, uh, they represent in some way uh, each of the three countries that uh, are participating in BSMERA. And the first one is a very well known for all the, uh, the people who works in public health is uh, um, Dr. Rudolf Birkow. And he was the, 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 the founder of uh, cellular pathology. And he did something very interesting because he went from the basic research and um, to epidemiology, to public health and poly politics, politics, not policy, but politics. He started by, by doing a, um, research and control of one outbreak of, uh, of typhus in, in, in what is now uh, 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 Poland. And after that experience, he realized that the, 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 what we, we need to do, and this is in the, in the 19th century, is not only to address the infectious disease by using uh, medicines, but also to do something else, to do education, to, do, to work in, in, in the social development. For him, medicine is a social science and politics is nothing else but medicine on a large scale. So he came from the basic research to the epidemiology, public health and politics because he was a politician then. So uh, Dr. Osvaldo Cruz, for the Brazilian colleagues that are here, is, the, is a very well-known um, public health practitioner. He studied uh, micro, microbiology, biology, and he was tasked to, to control uh, plague, and, and he was very, very interested in eliminating the Aedes aegypti, but uh, what he did in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, at the beginning of the 20th century, 1906. He also uh, yeah, played a very big role to stop to contain the yellow fever in Brazil. And he did something very interesting with smallpox vaccination in Brazil, because the, the, the population didn't want to, to be vaccinated. Do you see something similar with what is going on in the world, in some part of the world right now with uh, COVID vaccination? Well, in that, in that time, the people not only uh, opposed, but they, there were uh, revolts, there were social um, instability, and they opposed uh, very fear, fiercely to, to what Dr. Cruz was doing. Finally, he managed to, to convince them, and he contributed a lot with the elimination of the smallpox. And he became the director of public health. So again, from research to public health, and then uh, um, to politics, because he was director general of public health, which is uh, now the position that is uh, 
um, occupied, occupied, occupied by the Minister of Health. And he did a lot, of, he promoted a lot of research in Brazil, and he managed to, to do partnership con, with Pasteur Institute, and he founded uh, the, this research institute that is now known in Spanish by Fio Cruz, which means fun, fun, uh, Foundation Institute Osvaldo Cruz. He is one of the main characters in, in public health in Latin America, with many others. I will not mention all of them because we will use too, too much time. So again, um, is uh, research, public health, policies and politics. And from Peru, we have uh, this doctor, uh, the Dr. Manuel Nunez Butron, he's from Puno. Puno is the, the highest city in Peru. And, and he was, um, uh, he studied in, in, in Spain and he came back to Peru. He validated his, uh, his uh, degree in Peru and he went back all the way to Puno and started to work to, to realize that the problem was not only uh, the need of uh, medical care, but there was something else. That was education. And he was very interested and, in, and he worked a lot in typhus fever and smallpox elimination. And he, uh, he, he um, ran um, a magazine called Runasonko, which means Indian Heart, no, Indian Heart, and this magazine ran for almost a decade and was a, 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 a publishing messages on health and hygiene and people's organization. This experience was known by some people that was preparing the documents that then uh, were used to prepare the Alma Ata Declaration, the primary health care strategy which is still being used all around the world, no? the primary health care. This, this is one of the three or four main, there were many, but uh, uh, Dr. Nunez Butron experience was one of them. He, so in this case, he didn't do uh, the, 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 this uh, more scholar research, but he did uh, research in the community and he was learning by doing and applying, which is the process of public health. For, for, me, for us, for me, is public health is not a specialty of medicine. It's not a health care provided by, by the government. It's, it's, the, the, it's a multidisciplinary field that pursues to achieve health and welfare with, with and for the population. It is not something that one specialist does for all. Of course, we need a specialist. We need to do research to, to, to know how to, how to deal with the, with the problems we are facing. But what we need is to, to work with the, with the population, with the organizations of the population. Um, it can also define us as uh, Dr. Winslow and Dr. Terrors did, as a science and art of preventing diseases, preventing diseases and disabilities, of course, prolonging life, promoting physical, mental health and efficiency, efficiency to, to, to be able to work in the community through organized community efforts to, of course, uh, clean the environment, control infectious and non-infectious diseases, and injuries and to educate people in hygiene and organize health services and this and that, but also to tackle the social determinants of health. Public health is, 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 is a, is a multidisciplinary field that has a very comprehensive uh, approach that understands the, 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 the society as a whole and try to to, to implement actions for specific groups or for the general population. It is not 
ad addressed to one person. Of course, some of the actions of public health are done one by one, but our interest is not only the, that this specific person. Of course, we, this is the focus of, of our work, but we do this to protect others. The, the, the best example is, is the vaccination. You need to vaccinate one person to protect more people. This is what we are trying to do now with COVID, but it is, it is it's the same with other diseases. In Peru, for instance, we have 26 uh, diseases that are in the, in, in, the, in the immunization program. So we are preventing diseases. We have eliminated a lot of diseases. Why? Because we have worked with the community. We have worked in, in, in different regions, in different locations, with people from different disciplines. It is not a medical specialty. No, and, and it is not only for the government. There are non-governmental organizations. There are many other sectors that have to collaborate to have health for the people. And here I want to, if this is public health, uh, one of the ultimate goals is of course to promote health, to reduce risks, to prevent diseases that are preventable, to eradicate those uh, that can be eradicated, and to live a healthy and happy and long life. Um, I would like to ask you again, uh, which are the, the two viral diseases that, two, there are two, two viral diseases that have been uh, eradicated from the world. Now we will go again to Mentimeter, to the same Mentimeter. Um, let me go to the next question. Oops. Okay. We go to Mentimeter, the same number, and we will go to, you have to, to enter uh, two, two names of diseases, viral diseases. There have been eradicated two viral diseases from the world. You can type the names of the diseases for us to see what is your smallpox well. Good. There are two. Two viral diseases that have been eradicated from the world. Leprosy. Wow. Okay. Okay, interesting. Ebola, cow play. Okay, let, let's leave this here and go. You have said smallpox is the biggest. Several people have said that. Polio, rinderpest, viruela, which is smallpox, cow play. I, I guess cow play is rinderpest, variola, Ebola, leprosy. Okay. Let's go to the, to, the, to the presentation again. And I ask this question over and over again. I will keep doing this because, not because uh, to just to, to have this as a contest, who knows more and this and that, it's just to reflect something very important. Look, this is a nature um, 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 article, this is not by uh, peer review, this is just a, a, a news, but, but it has been published in Nature. And it says that the smallpox is, is unique in that it is the only infectious disease that, had, that have ever been eradicated. I disagree with this because this is not the only one and you have, you have uh, answered the right I, you have posed the, the right answer. 
There are two diseases that have been eradicated. Smallpox, which affects human beings, and rinderpest, which affects uh, cows, other animals. And the reason why I am asking this is because this is public health. This is, this is the one health approach. We live in a world where animal health, human health, and environmental health are combined. And we need this approach to address the problems of the world. If without that, we will not be able to understand what is really going on and we are not going to solve the problems. Many uh, in, in, in emerging uh, infectious diseases are zoonotic. It means they came from other animals. And I, and I am saying on purpose other animals because from my point of view, we are part of the, of the, of the, of the nature and we are an animal that is aware of its ex existence. Well, let's go to what is public uh, health research. Public health research is if uh, we, we have already this, this, this comprehensive approach about public health, it's a multidisciplinary field. And then the public health research is the cornerstone of, of, of the practice of public health. It aims to, to, to understand and to influence the factors that determine the population's health. And in that way, we will be able to propose better interventions and to set health policies because we need to this, this, these decisions, these big decisions, the policy decisions to be based in the, the most updated um, scientific evidence. We need to have scientific knowledge to, to, to really support the decisions, the, especially the, the policy decisions uh, because these actions are um, will be addressed to, to improve health. This will be important to, to, to better understand the inequity, the disparities in, in, in health. We are seeing in, the, in different pro health problems that there is there are differences in, in, in people living with different with different levels of education, with different occupations, with different living in different countries. So these differences are not natural. These are differences that come from the different way we live. And so we need to, to, to do research to understand and to reduce these gaps. In, in that way, we will have a, um, more more um, information to influence the policy decision. And we can also shape the health, um, the, the health education or the education programs in general. And, and understand what are the trends to act um, timely and not after the, after the fact has already happened, you know? Uh, also, the research can help us to, to better use drugs, vaccines, medical devices, and diagnostics, and lead to development of new, new tools for, for diagnosis, for treatment, and for prevention. We will talk about that a little bit later as well, improve. And in this, um, as, as, I, as I said before, if public health is a multidisciplinary field, so in, in public health research, we need the combination of different disciplines. And we will see a case at the end where we see how it is combined. It is not only about uh, medicine. It is not uh, only about veterinary. It's not all about epidemiology. It's also about um, uh, social sciences, about genetics, of psychology, economy. This is, these are all disciplines that sometimes are very important to understand something that is affecting the, the health of the population in one place um, or in one country. There are several types of research. Uh, you can do biomedical research, 
you know, basic research. Um, you can do clinical research to understand what works in the, for the patients. Epidemiological research to understand where and who is affected by this or that problem. And also, it's very important to do health system research because we need to, to know if, the, if the, the, the system as it is organized right now is, is actually working or not. If, if solving the problems of the population, of what are the specific problems that, that it, the, this health system in Brazil, in Peru, in Germany, in other parts of the world is working? Why is not working? How can we solve that problem? So these are um, four main types of research. And how to set priorities of, in public health research, which is something that we have been discussing for a long time. We have, we have been doing research for centuries, but uh, we, we are uh, discussing the best method to, do, um, to, to set priorities. What? Where, how, where are we going to put the, the scarce uh, financing of um, the, the scarce funds that we have? In Peru, we have been doing research for a long time, but since 2001, uh, there was a systematic uh, uh, um, process using different participative approaches that were refining the ways to set the priorities and the, the organization that is leading this is the National Institute of Health, which is known here as INS, ENS, Instituto Nacional de Salud. And the, in, when we discuss this, this is very, very, very uh, uh, tough uh, task because setting priorities is not always easy. There are different interests. There are different approaches. There are different needs in, in researchers, in organizations, in the population. Mm -hmm. And we have different ways to see which is more important, which problem is more important, but we need to define something. And we are used, we try to combine the health situation of uh, health problems with the um, the with the with the um, interest of the different actors to um, to prepare the, the, the priorities in in public health research and each region within a country has a different uh, problems and different interests. And so we need uh, different uh, priorities for different regions. I am not going to go through the, this, but for instance, this is the 2007-2012 Rubian NIH uh, research priorities. And we see here uh, four, four areas with uh, um, all 22, um, 22 areas for um, public health research, from epidemiology to interventions, uh, the social determinants of health, and which health technology uh, are better suited to, 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 to solve the problems. So you will see here, you don't see only diseases, you see also the importance of how the systems are working and how can we uh, solve these problems using this or that tool, meaning technologies. Technologies in the, in the broad sense, not only uh, the, the machines, the, the laptops, the this and, and, and the, the equipment, but technology is also organization. So this is one, one, um, one, um, uh, priority uh, research priority published in 2007. But in 2019, there were 10 areas that go from um, road traffic injury through all the way through 
environmental, occupational health, and mental health. Here we have another approach. The approach is more um, the disease or the, the, the disability or the, uh, or, or the health problem itself. And within each one, there are different topics that should be, um, should be um, research, should be, the, should be, the, should be the, the, the topic for research. So this is a different, a slightly different approach. And when we see uh, the, this is another, another um, research priorities that are, were done by, by one uh, in organization in Peru that is called a salud, which means is the social insu insurance in health. And they have divided their, their, their priorities in seven um, health, problems and four uh, health system and interventions activities. So this is, an, again, a different approach. So this, they talk about cancer, mental health and this and that, but also about gaps in human resources, uh, uh, palliative care and this and that. So another approach. And here we have one approach which is totally different because it has uh, four main areas. There are many, many lines of research in each one, but I will not uh, go through them. But this all the 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 the, the, uh, the common um, uh, the share um, characteristic of this is that all of them are addressed to the health system, health care, inter, uh, the integral care, uh, the health promotion, and the management. So this is a different approach. The, the only problem is that the name is, is misleading because it, 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 it looks like uh, it is, it is it, they are the priorities for the, for, for, for the country, but I guess these are the priorities for the School of Public Health or the Ministry of Health. So uh, in short, Set priorities in public health is important, it's a process, it's difficult, it's changing, it's, and this will, this should lead the, 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 the availability of the funds. And, but when, when we do public health research, we need to look at the health situation. There are many ways, I am only using one, but this is by no means the only way. There are many other there are several other tools to do this uh, analysis of the health situation. I am using this because I want to, to highlight some, some issues. And here are the, 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 the global and the three countries that are part of BCMERA. Uh, and, and we see at, at, uh, at a glance that, uh, that this, is, uh, this is Germany. And the, the blue are um, communicable, non-communicable diseases. Red are communicable diseases, infectious diseases. And green are um, uh, accidents, uh, uh, injuries, and other causes. As you can see, Peru and Brazil are almost this is burden of disease. Burden of disease combines the impact for a society of uh, um, death at early age plus uh, the, 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 the years lost due to disability. So how many years lose the society because this person that was supposed to live 80 years because this is the life spent expectancy in that country. For instance, let's say in one country, the life expectancy is 80 years old and this person uh, dies at 40 for myocardial infect, uh, infarct infarction. And so the society loses 40 years. But what happens if other person 
suffers a cardiac attack, a myocardial uh, infarction, and um, has uh, 40 years old and has 40 years of life, but with uh, at a 50% of his ability to, to, to work and, and live. So the society will lose 20 years. So if, if you add up all these numbers in a more sophisticated way, you have the years life um, lost by early death and disability and, and, and years of life lived with disability. So this, this is what the, the global burden of disease um, indicator means. So we see here that uh, Germany, for instance, is, 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 a, is a society that is suffering more for non-communicable diseases, diseases of, of, the, of the wealthy countries. And we are coming to this in that direction. We are increasing the, the, the proportion of people that is suffering with um, non-communicable diseases. But we still have problems here. Um, the darkest colors in each um, place means that it has um, uh, 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 the problem has has increased. For instance, HIV in Peru has increased the number of um, of uh, and years lost. Um, diabetes in in Peru as well in as a communicable diseases. Um, the liver diseases and Alzheimer diseases in Brazil, etc. We always say that, uh, well, we are we are worse than before, and this is not uh, good. But the, the truth is that that we are living longer lives. For instance, this is this is Germany and Peru which are uh, around 80 years. The life expectancy in Peru and Germany are 80 years. In Brazil is 77 or so. In the world is 75. And this is Rwanda. And I want you to see this because when we have, when we will have this, uh, this, uh, this uh, curve, Two years later, we will have a reduction here because of the impact of COVID-19. What happened here? Do you know? This is Rwanda. Rwanda is a very nice country. But in 1994, they had a genocide. One million people was killed in 100 days. So in, in, it is reflected here in this, in this um, curve. And we will have a decrease here, a small decrease in many countries uh, due to the COVID-19. Very small, but it will be important. So, uh, and the health situation in Peru, was it always the same? No, it, this is a three decades later comparison. In 1919 to almost 2020. As you can see, the, 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 the red ones, which are infectious diseases or, or problems of, uh, uh, of developing world, are decreasing in the ranking. For instance, respiratory infection and TB is going from, from one to seven. But the, the, the more wealthy uh, countries, type of diseases, which are the non-communicable diseases in blue, are increasing and taking the lead now. The first five causes of um, GBD, global burden of disease, are uh, non-communicable diseases in Peru. This is very important to do research and to set policies. We need to to prepare our health system to deal with this new situation. This is going to increase over time. 
and we will need different system organization, different professionals. So we need to be prepared for that. This is why uh, research, public health research is important because we here we can see very easily. But in 1990, we thought that it was going to be the same for many decades, but it, it, it has changed. It has changed and the research shows us what is changing and why and who is being affected. This is just a summary. And, but when we look at small details like uh, diseases, uh, neglected diseases like tuberculosis, tuberculosis in the world is uh, around 150 per 100,000 people. In Peru is 120, something like that. It's very high. In Brazil is much less. In Germany is almost non-existent. So there is a big gap here. So we should go down here. Peru and Brazil, we should go, we should have levels like Germany. I remember that when I was in Germany, there was a, a colleague, um, fe, um, a classmate uh, had the TB and he was, uh, he was uh, sent to the hospital and he was there for one month or so. In our countries, in, in Africa, in Latin America and Asia, this type of TB, tuberculosis, was treated in the, in the health post, in the health center. But in, that, in Germany, it was rare. And my classmate went to the hospital and was there for, for almost three or four weeks. So we need to go down but we still have this problem. Cystic sarcosis is another neglected disease. We don't think about this disease. It's not fancy, it's not affecting many people, it's not affecting people who can uh, protest and can say things. Even they don't know because cystic sarcosis is, is not very easy to, 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 to find. So in Peru, we still have cystic sarcosis and in, in, in Brazil as well. But Germany, they don't have cystic sclerosis. So there is another, again, a gap. And this has to do with the way we live, with social condition. We said before, the social determinants of health are very important. And we can see here, we can see here. Okay, uh, who does public health research in Peru. There are many organizations, mainly the, 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 the academia, and, and Cayetano Radio is the, the top uh, research organization in Peru in general, this is in general. And the Ministry of Health here is, is in the second place, but it is the National Institute of Health because this is the specialized uh, area of the government that does uh, research. So the, the, in health, the, the, the top organizations are Cayetano Heredia, the INS, and um, San Marcos University, which is the oldest university in Peru. These are the three top organizations that, that, that uh, do research in Peru, in, in public health research in Peru. This is in general, we are leading this, and uh, Cayetano Heredia is also uh, the top organization that that, the, that get funds from, from the National Science and Technology Fund and the top organization in South America that get, get funds from, from the National Institute of Health of, um, of the United States. And, and uh, yeah, okay, so. I want to show a couple of a couple of cases of uh, how to promote research in, in in Peru. This is this is what we did when 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 we were when I was in the, the National Institute of Health, 2015-2016. What the the, the 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 priority the the policy that we that, that we promote was research to innovate because the future is here and we need to protect the health of the people. 
And we need new, new diagnostic tools, new prevention strategies, new treatments, and new health system models. And we were able to work something in the, in the, fur, in the, in the, in the first three areas that I am showing here. We didn't, it was just one year and a half, it was not enough to, to do more. And we create this uh, research fund that, that was, uh, we created this in 2016 and it was launched two, two years later. This is something important in our countries. Sometimes you have to do, you have to set or, or start um, initiatives that you are not going to see during your tenure. Someone else is going to do later. This is, and this is very important. This, 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 uh, this makes you happy. This fund now exists. And we were able to do something very interesting. Uh, we start a very innovative research for treatment, especially in one neglected disease, which is the, the bites by the snake, the snake bites. And, <clears throat> and we uh, promote the research of uh, nanobodies to, uh, to be used to, um, to neutralize the venom of, this, uh, of these snakes. And what, what are the nanobodies? Why, uh, why we have here a llama? And this was the minister, it was myself. This, is, this llama was named Tito. I don't know the, 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 the people in the, in, in, at the Institute named Tito, so I call Tito. Tito was the first llama that came for that project. And nanobodies are drawn from llamas. In what are nanobodies? Nanobodies are small antibodies that are more easy. It's not easy, but it's easier than using antibodies to prepare uh, to prepare treatments or even um, diagnosis tests and this and that because you you can identify the the, the the, the, the specific area of the nanobody that is doing the neutralization of the agent that you want to neutralize. For example, if we had this research developed, fully developed, we could have this uh, antibody that we are using for, for COVID. Do, do you remember there is, a, there is a combination of antibodies that are, are being used in the United States, Regeneron. With, with nanobodies, we can easily prepare uh, different treatments. In this case, our idea was not only to prepare the, 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 the solution for this neglect, neglected problem, which is snake, snake bites, which happen in, in, in developing countries, but to start what we call a platform. We wanted to have this nanobodies research group to solve this problem and then go to other and other and other and other problems. And we were not, uh, and this is the, the publication of this group and they developed the, the nanobodies. And they are on the way to prepare the actual um, um, uh, um, treatment for, for, this, for this problem. And in, in the meantime, other groups in the world have been using also our nanobodies, well, I mean our nanobodies, the nanobodies of, of the llamas and other uh, andin camelids to, to create vaccines against influenza, flu. So we are, were in the right track. We need to support this group. We need to promote the group to do things. And this is another example. This, is, this was done by, by, by a group, a research group uh, that is in Cayetano. The first one is in INS in, in, the, in the Ministry of Health. And this is in Cayetano. And this group show that the elimination of tenosolium 
that causes cyst, neural cystic sarcosis can be done. And this is a, a complex and smart parasite because it changes all the time, and gets, uh, uh, gets, uh, 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 keeps uh, dormant for, for several years. This is a zoonotic disease. It has only two hosts and has an, a, a lot of potential to improve the, 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 the biology of the, of the area where we can do the intervention. And the, the, the exposure, exposure of the animal, the pig, is, is because uh, of, uh, of the, the bad conditions they are, they are, they are raised. Mm -hmm. And this, this cystic psychosis, this problem is, can be, is, is er, er, eradicable. It's eradicable because we have only one um, definitive host, which is the human being. The main reservoir is the pig. It's a domestic animal, it's raised for, for meat and this and that, but we, I mean, we, we can find the animal, the reservoir. Um, there are no wild reservoirs nor vectors, and there are effective treatments. There are four reasons why we can get rid of cystic psychosis. And I think, as a public health um, goal, I should promote, I would promote the, 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 the eradication of the the cystic psychosis in, in Peru because this is achievable and will free us of one disease and will improve the life of many people that uh, raises this kind, kind of animals and we will reduce the seizures, the epilepsy and death due to, to cystic psychosis. There have been several previous interventions on this and, and the, the group, the cystic psychosis group did uh, it's research in the north of Peru. This is Ecuador, and this is Tumbes, the region that is bordered with Ecuador. This is the map of the study they did. And again, let's connect this with what I said before. I said before that we have to combine the public health with multidisciplinary, and in research, I said that we have to combine different disciplines. This, is the, this is the shows you how to combine disciplines. They combine in vitro studies, post oncosphere neoblasts, parasites, uh, pigs, uh, the, the, the immunodiagnosis, uh, uh, antiparasites, uh, research in humans, epidemiology, uh, clinical, clinical research. So this is a map that shows you how how important it is to work in a multidisciplinary teams. This is the, 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 the timeline for the interventions. They had one intervention. They didn't plan this uh, beforehand uh, since the very beginning. They, they did this and from the results they got here in 2005, they get funding for the intervention two and for the, the and to scale intervention three. So they did this using these tools of the research, and they came up with this. This is was published in New England Journal of Medicine, and you have phase one, phase two, phase three. But the important is, these are the strategies, mass treatment in humans, minimal mass treatment, strategic treatment of humans, only those who have symptoms or who have a, a serology positive, and peak replacement, they, they try all these strategies in part in phase one. In phase two, they selected those who have the better results. And in phase three, they use only the strategy that they found that was the, the best. So you have again, basic research, uh, animal research, human research, uh, epidemiology, medicine, veterinary, combine, and then you have intervention. Public health is, is always about identifying the problem, doing a research, 
proposing solutions, implementing solutions, and assessing the solutions. And this is the solution they came up. This is the treatment. I am not going to read this. This is, you can read later. This is what it what worked in that in that intervention. When they did the, the, the analysis, they found that, that only uh, two or three pigs that were reintroduced had, had um, uh, um, were infected, but no pig uh, with a live uh, non-degenerated non cyst was found in, 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 the, in, in all the villages they, they studied. So, uh, what is known about this disease is what is known about this after this research, after this intervention, is the transmission can be interrupted and it can be sustained. You know? Those uh, pigs that survive uh, confirm that we need to keep working on that. It is not enough to do one intervention and then abandon the place. We need to keep doing it. The problem is not so. And this is the team. And what, what this is important is that they, with the funds they raise, they uh, built this um, center, uh, um, they call this Center of Global Health. This is a Cayetano's facility in Tumbes that has equipment and this and that. But the most important is most of the people here, but two or three, are from Tumbes, from this that region. And maybe in other countries this is not so interesting, but in Peru it's very interesting because we have created, they have created a group of, of researchers that that were born, that live in Tumbes, and now they are doing other other research. They are keep doing this but also doing other research because they have a place, they have people, they have connection, they have learned a lot. So capacity building, this is very important. Well, finally, I had other things to say, but uh, I want to, to show you something that, uh, that uh, summarizes what we, um, are living or how we can describe what happened. Sometimes we, we need to keep doing research and interventions, but sometimes things change completely. This is a nine, nine years old kid from Michigan who said, who answered this when he was asked about the, the 2020 actually, but I, I, I expanded this for the last two years. It was like, like looking both ways before crossing the street and then getting hit by a submarine. So we, we, we weren't expecting this. So what we did, we react, reacted by doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of research in all over the world. Well, this is what I wanted to say today and I am open for any question from the from the audience. Thank you.